The following video demonstration will take you through the various components of the Smartfire environment. Before we start looking at the components in detail and individually, we'll first consider an overview of the system by looking at this schematic. The Smartfire environment consists of a number of executable programs which link together to complete a Firefield model simulation. The first tool in the environment is the Smartfire Scenario Designer. This enables you to either design a scenario geometry using a 2D workspace from scratch or to import 2D floor plans either as a DXF file or from a bitmap. Once the scenario designer has run and you have saved a model file from it, this can be loaded into the Smartfire GUI or case specification environment. The case specification environment allows you to edit the geometry in a 3D workspace where you can also configure physics, additional behavior, and configure the scenario settings that you want to use when that scenario is run. The case specification environment also has a meshing system built into it, and once the meshing system has been run, two files will be generated, namely a command script file and a geometry file. These are the two files which are needed to configure a Smartfire CFD simulation. And once the CFD engine has run, it will generate some results. Although not shown on this diagram, the results can be read into the Smartfire data view program for analysis and generation of visualizations. So the first tool that we're going to consider in this demonstration is the Scenario Designer. I fire off the Scenario Designer, make it full screen, and change the background color to white so it's hopefully easier to view. To talk you around the user interface of the Scenario Designer first, we see a large workspace area where you actually draw and design your scenario. We have a building panel which shows the progress of building the whole building structure. And the scenario panel shows the section or portion of the building which you want to take through to CFD simulation. They may not be the same. You may not want to model the whole building. You might only want to model a portion of it. The other thing to notice about the user interface is that all of the objects that you can add are on this top menu bar, but they're also available in the object selection panel. The first thing that we're going to do in order to test and design a geometry is to set the grid resolution, which I'm going to change to 0.2 meters. And you see that this is the background snap to mesh that we will draw our objects onto to create the geometry for this scenario. The first thing that we have to create uh, in any scenario is a story. And this is simply a matter of selecting with the mouse to start the rubber band selection box and changing the size of the story to that required. It doesn't matter if you get this wrong at this stage because you can edit the properties of the story by going back to selection mode, which is the little arrow, right clicking within the boundary of the story and looking at the properties. So if for some reason I got the size wrong or the position wrong, then I could actually edit those properties here. So go back to the design area now. Uh, I'm going to add some rooms to this story. And the room drawing tool is the little square filled in box. And once I'm in room drawing mode again, I select with the mouse, drag the rubber band box to the size I want, select again to set that size. And I can carry on adding rooms in this way until I've filled up the geometry with the correct rooms. In this instance, I'm going to 
create some sort of small office structure with a central corridor with rooms off either side. So you see that you can very quickly build up a uh, representation of your required geometry. At the moment in the scenario panel you notice that everything is shown in grey. That means that at the moment we haven't added our geometry to the scenario. So at the moment nothing would be exported. It's only when we click on the add building or add story to scenario that will things will start to become filled in in this scenario panel. I'll do that now just to show what that looks like. Now we have to keep updating this and certainly updating it before the end to keep track of what we will actually be exporting to the case specification environment and what we will actually be running in the CFD simulation. So at the moment all these rooms are sealed off and separated from each other so the probably the next thing to do is add some other objects and the first object that I'm going to add is doors. So select the door drawing tool and now I can choose to add doors to either side of a boundary. So I can add a door either in the corridor edge or in the room edge and it will know that it has to punch through that wall gap to join the two rooms. So I'm going to add my doors onto the corridor and these are created at a default size at the position where I click the mouse. These are all internal doors and by default they will be created in an open state. There's also the potential for adding external doors beyond which there will be an outside region to couple flows within the geometry to the outside region. Going back to the selection mode you can see that I can select on any of the doors to move them around although I can't take them away from the edge that they're associated with. I can change the size of the door using the blob at the end and I can also check the properties of the door by right clicking on the door and using properties from the context menu. And in the properties for the door you see that there are such things as elevation and size in terms of width and height. There's also in the general settings state is open. If you require that a particular door is actually closed at the beginning of the simulation then you can change this to closed. Notice that the door symbol is now drawn in a slightly different way. It's no longer a dotted line, it's a solid line. Further objects that can be added to the simulation are windows, ceiling openings, which are particularly useful for linking areas between two different stories, for example where the stairway runs up through a multi-story building, blocks, which are essentially solid objects. Composite objects are collections of any other types of objects which you can then clone and uh, reproduce in different areas of the geometry. Partitions are essentially thin plates which will block flow and these can be uh, any height and any position within a room. Staircases provide semi-realistic blockages where stairs run up through the geometry. Fans provide momentum sources. Inlets provide blowing and momentum driven flow of prescribed velocity. And outlets provide areas where air can disappear to from the geometry when the pressure is higher. Fire object is a volume that will be used to configure the fire source. 
At the moment, this geometry uh, could be taken to simulation, but it would be a very dull case. So in order to make it more interesting, I'm going to add a fire object into one of the rooms. And that now is enough to take forward to a simulation. However, to make this case a little bit more interesting, I think we'll add another story to it. And in order to do that, we first need to think how this story will link to the story above. And the way that I'm going to choose to do that is to assume that this back room here is not actually a room, it's a stairway. And I will add a staircase object to this room. And in order to provide a link between the two stories, I need, also need a ceiling opening. This is clearer on the schematic of the building, where you can see the stairs leading up to the opening. I again make sure that all my recent objects are added to the scenario so that when the scenario is going to be exported all of these objects are included. In order to create the second story I could design it again from scratch but if I want it to have the same structure as this story I can simply clone it and to do that I select the clone current story button or edit clone story and we see that this creates a copy of the original story above the original story but without the fire. I'm going to choose to have this building with only two stories so it doesn't make particular sense on the upper story to have the additional opening or stairs and it doesn't make sense on this story to have the door at the end of the corridor. Again, I add the building to the scenario to make sure that everything has been updated correctly. There is another design checking mode within the scenario designer where we can actually choose to walk through the geometry and when I press the walk through button this means that the display area turns over to a 3D representation and now I can use the arrow keys to move around my geometry and look at the objects. Notice that the doors that are open are displayed slightly differently than the doors that are closed. There are also some settings to change the way that the walkthrough is displayed. We could actually change to a flat shaded view, which would present a slightly more realistic view where you cannot see through the objects. So going back to the design mode, I'm happy now to take this geometry forward to a simulation, so I need to be able to export it and that is simply achieved by going to the file and create smart file simulation. I then need to give this exported case a name. I'm going to call it test. And this saves the geometry and automatically starts the case specification environment with this geometry loaded.